Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Jill Brown and this is your seventh workout in our eight week series. You've got a special workout today because it's all abs and core and who doesn't want to start working their midsection? Now a lot of people wonder what the core really is. Is it just your abdominals? Not really. It's everything between your shoulder girdle and your hip girdle. So we're going to work all this. We're going to do a lot of the work on the floor, so make sure you have a comfortable area to lie down on. I've got my handy mat and have some dumbbells in case you want to do some weights. So let's get started. Let's do a few deep breaths as we always start off with. Inhale and exhale four times. We want to get oxygen into our blood and all through our muscles. Two more. And one more. That's the easiest part of the workout right there. And then we're going to take it to a march. So just march it up. We want to keep the abdominals really tight and the shoulders back and chest high. And we're going to take this into higher knees. So knees up and up and then swing your arms like a soldier. And don't let your body collapse. So lift your knees with your abs. You want to see me from the side. I'm trying to bring my knees as high as my hips if you can. All right. Give you a rotation to the other side. Got that? Now let's make those arms a little bit bigger. And let's do eight of these. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Now we're going to crisscross. So bring the opposite elbow to the knee. Try not to let your body collapse down. So you don't want to crunch over, even though it is a core workout. We want to lift the knee with the strength of our hip and our abdominals. And let's do 10, nine, eight, nice and big, seven, move your blood, burn some calories already, five more. You can go your own pace or you can follow mine. Mine's gonna be a little more intense because I wanna get warm in a hurry. Last one. All right, go grab your dumbbells. And we're gonna do standing wood chops. So you've seen these before. This time we're gonna keep our body really still to challenge the core. So bend your knees, tighten up those abs, bring your dumbbells out to the side, and then across the body. Notice what's different between this one and the other ones we've done. Nothing's moving. Not even my shiny silver shirt. Just across the body. All right, so I've done five of these. Let's do five more. Keep everything still, maybe bend those knees a little bit more. And you're gonna try to reach up, keep the dumbbells parallel, bring it across the body without moving anything else. And now to the other side. Reach up, diagonally across. Long arms, the longer your arms are, the more of the challenge you're gonna feel. Good. That's it. Try to keep a smile on your face. That might be the hardest part. Four more. And three. Don't let your shirt move. Two. And one. Let's turn this into a figure eight. So we're gonna bring it up and around and up to the shoulders and around. So start making this figure eight motion. Maybe you might wanna do it with one dumbbell. That's fine if two dumbbells are too heavy. And you can also bend your elbows but I'm trying to keep my body as still as possible. And let's do eight more figure eights. One and two. Everything stay as still as possible. That's it. Good, squeezing those abs in. I know you can't really tell sometimes whether your abs are flat or if they're just extended, but I'm really trying to suck them in and squeeze solid. So they're not tucked, they're braced and done. We're gonna do some knees to the side. So hold your dumbbells up and bring your knees out sideways. Later on in our program, we're gonna have some exercises more like this that are a little more intense. So let's start practicing them here. And now if you can, bring your arms up a little higher and do a side crunch. So here we go. This is a real workout. Lifting your knee as high as you can out to the side of you and then add that crunch. And if you can, pull both dumbbells down, up and around. Nice, so you're gonna start feeling this in a hurry. I'm starting to feel it right, right now. <laughs> Excellent. If you can, see if you can get that knee to come out to the side of your body just a little more and rotate the hip. You're doing good. All right, let's just do four more, unless I lost you already. Don't worry, as you do this more often, you'll do more and more, and one more. Excellent. Okay, bring the dumbbells down to the floor. Let's come on down to the mat. Get yourself nice and comfortable. We're gonna start off with dead bugs, and then we're gonna add the dumbbells. So roll down or brace yourself and come down one hand at a time. Arms up in the air, knees in tabletop, 
And this is an exercise that's fantastic for helping develop core strength and stability. We're gonna exhale and very slowly bring one leg down and then lift. Other leg, tap down and lift. Slowly and lift. So the work is really on the way down. You're exhaling and squeezing those abdominals, kind of like you wanna press a marshmallow into your mat and press it in so it squishes. And then after you've mastered this, we're gonna add some arms. So opposite arm down. As I bring down my right leg, I'm reaching back with my left arm and vice versa. Now the goal is to try not to wiggle and jiggle. Got that? And let's do one more on each side and then we'll make it a little more challenging and we'll add the dumbbells. So here we go. Taking your dumbbells right over the shoulders, soften the elbows a little bit, bring your knees up into tabletop, brace the abdominals, and let's go back to that dead bug and we're gonna do the opposite arm again, but look what I'm gonna do with the other hand. I'm gonna oppose it and that's gonna actually help you stay a little more balanced. So here we go. I call this sometimes toy soldier, sometimes dead bug with arms. You can make up your own name. Maybe we'll have a contest for who comes up with the best name for this exercise. So keep bracing those abs and exhale as your arm and leg go down. And make sure the dumbbells aren't too heavy. We don't want to feel any strain in the shoulders. And if it feels good to go a little faster, you can. Although I really think that this exercise is best when it's done slower. I think you'll feel it more. But take it at your own pace. You don't need to match me exactly. And let's just do a couple more and then we're gonna move on to some crunches. So here we go, four more. One, two, three. Don't forget that exhale and four. Good, I'm gonna start off with one dumbbell on this next exercise and then if you feel like taking both, you can. This is just a half roll up or a crunch. So tuck your chin just a little bit, roll your shoulder blades up off the mat. We're gonna reach the dumbbell just towards the knees or maybe just till they get on top of the knees and then roll back. But what we don't wanna do is we don't wanna do a sit up. So as the name implies, that's a sit up, sitting up. A crunch is just pulling the ribs to the hips. So here we go, reach the arms back and then just crunch. Reach the arms back and crunch. So how are we gonna make this harder? A Couple of ways. First, you can add your second dumbbell, holding the dumbbells, reach back, and then crunch, or just keep crunching. That tempo change from going from slow to fast will give you some burn. So follow me, watch this. Let's do a couple of fast ones, small and tight, and then we'll do a couple of slow, big ones. So reach back and up, and do that again. Reach back and stay up and pulse and crunch. It's those tempo changes that get you, I promise. Let's do four more of these. One, two, three, and now go slow. Reach back and up. One more time, slow. Reach back and up. Now pulse it out. How many can you do? Let's do five more. One, two, three, four. Big squeeze tight. Ah, <sighs> excellent job. All right, put one dumbbell down and let's go side to side now. So for your next challenge, we're gonna add some rotation. We're gonna bring the dumbbell around to one side of the thigh, roll back down, and then to the other side of the thigh. So if you look at the dumbbell only, you'll see it looks like I'm making an arc over the knees. So that's what we want. If you can go faster, it'll really look like you're just rolling over one side and then the other. Keep your feet down flat and you're just crunching. You should feel the burn by now, even just practicing it. Chin is slightly tucked. You don't want to be examining your ceiling. So keep your eye line with me and keep going. It's gonna burn pretty soon if not already. So just a handful of these more might be all you can do. So from here, let's try 10 more. If you need a break, take one and come back. So eight, eight, seven, seven, six, six, five. And four, oh, I feel that. Three, it's like a blowtorch on my abs. One more, excellent, and roll it down. Put your dumbbells down to the side. Take one hand, put your hand behind the head just so you can lift your shoulders. But again, don't lift your shoulders with your hand. Lift your shoulders with your abdominals. That's what we're here for. So pull them in and down, take your opposite hand, and you're gonna try to scratch your ankle. You ever got a mosquito bite at the beach? So we're just gonna do maybe 30 seconds on each side at the very most. 
that should take us to about 15. That might be really intense today. If you look at my shoulders, they're staying off the floor. So it feels kind of like you're hovering above the floor and trying to do a side bend at the same time. It should feel really intense. Am I at about 30? Okay. So with the hover over the floor, it should feel really intense. Let's come down and do the other side. Switch hands, feel that burn? Lift up and let's just do about 30 seconds on this side too. Give or take a couple, you may need a break in between. So I'm reaching, my palm is facing up and I'm trying to reach my fingers towards my ankle without my feet moving. And you're not going up and down, you're going side to side. If I was standing up, it would look like I'm doing little side bends. And it is a burn and a half. I feel this already, and I'm not even close to 30 seconds, am I? A few more. Take breaks as you need. And fantastic. Roll it down. Stretch back. Take a nice stretch back. You're going to need it after that one because it is a burn and a half. And now we're going to do something called a half get up. So pull your knee in. Lift yourself up. Make sure you have one or two dumbbells. I'm going to just use one on this one. And the half get up is an opposite leg straight to the opposite arm. So if I'm holding it in my right arm, my left leg is straight, my left hand is gonna be out on the floor, I'm just gonna punch the roof, or in my case, the beautiful cloudy sky. You're gonna punch the roof and roll up onto that elbow. And that's all it is, that's the half get up. This knee stays up facing the sky. All right, so let's pick a number, let's do 10. Here we go, one and roll it down, and two. So what I'm doing is I'm rolling from one shoulder blade to the other. Roll and press. Three, punch the roof, and four. You, it's not cheating to roll onto this elbow. Five, that's what you want. And six, it's a very functional movement. It's kind of like just what you would do if you were lying in bed and you have to get up without rolling to the side of your bed. And we're at number 10. Let's do this on the other side. So change hands with your dumbbell. Extend the opposite leg. Your arm is just slightly out to the side of you. It's gonna start with a punch and we're gonna roll to this elbow. So just put it down on the floor and it's called a half get up because this is how you start getting up off the floor. Very functional, here we go. Punch that arm up and roll to that elbow. Reach for the sky 10 times. That's one and two. When I say roll, I'm talking about rolling from one shoulder to the other. Three. And four. Let's try to go straight up to the sky. Five. Nice big stretch. Six. Ah. Seven. You got that? If you don't have a lot of flexibil flexibility in your shoulder, you may feel that you can't reach the arm all the way up. That's okay. Go as high as you can. And number 10. Next exercise is from Pilates. I'll put my dumbbells down. I'm gonna pull my knees in towards my chest, rock myself up, and this is called a half roll down with a twist. So you did this in workout number six, only we're gonna add on a little special sauce. Bring the arms out in front of you, tuck your abdominals in, you're gonna make your body into a soup bowl, and then we're gonna rotate to one side, center, and lift. Got that? Here we go. Roll halfway down, don't lay on the floor. Turn to the side, come back. I gotta keep watching you, make sure you don't cheat. Roll halfway down, turn to the side, bring it back to the center, and lift, great. Keep those moving, keep your feet down. What happens is when you don't have enough strength in your abdominals is that your feet start to come off the floor. So you might really be fighting that. Remember when we were kids and we had to hold each other's ankles down on the floor? Yeah, you don't have your friend with you helping you right now. So it's all on you. Where are your friends when you need them? Let's do one more. Excellent. Okay, take your dumbbells and move them out of your way. We're gonna roll onto the floor and do some hip bridges. So carefully roll down, lift your toes up, press your heels down, and bring your hips up off the floor. So the hip bridge, Primarily works the glutes and the hamstrings, fantastic for the back of the body. Back of the body is also part of the core right here. So make sure that you're not arching and you're just holding. This is gonna be a static hold, 
versus some of the other ones we've done where we were going up and down. Peel your shoulder blades open and just hang out here. Think of taking a dip in the pool or jumping in that jacuzzi behind me. Happy thoughts. Toes are up, pressing through the heels. The lowest part of your core is your pelvic floor. So rather than thinking so much about the glutes and hamstrings for today's workout, on this one, I want you to really just think about that belly button. Pulling it in tight, trying to level off. And good job, roll it down. The next exercise comes from Pilates, and this is going to be an easy version of the hundreds. The hundreds is a really intense exercise if you've ever seen anyone do it in Pilates before. We're going to be fanning our arms down while we exhale, and then inhaling through the nose like you have a cold and you're sniffling. Only we're going to try to do it with our shoulder blades off the floor and our legs in the air. Now you may not be able to do that for 100 reps, so I won't even make you do it for a full minute. Anytime that you need to take a rest, if you feel strain in the back of your neck, just lie back on the floor. So here we go, I'm gonna get up into position, knees and tabletop, abs engaged, and let's start fanning the arms. Exhale out, and inhale in. So it's routine to do about five of each, and inhale, like I have a cold, and exhale, and inhale in. I'm doing about five of each. And exhale out. And inhale in. You feel that burn? And exhale out. Straight arms, you're reaching away. Inhale in. And try to keep a nice smooth pattern. And try to make it look easy. Then you can have my job. And inhale in. And exhale out. And inhale in. How about two more times? And exhale out. And inhale in. And exhale out. Don't try to look pretty. Inhale. And done. Roll back. That is some burn. Bring your knees over to one side. Do a quick stretch. And after this, we're going to work on our planks. Planks. That doesn't sound fun. Oh, I promise you these are. Here we go, grab your knee, lift yourself up or roll to the side as I showed you in some earlier workouts. We're gonna go into an elbow plank. Elbows have to be right under the shoulders and press your feet back. If you're still having a hard time working on those planks and we've done them before, you'll put one knee down and then the other knee down and you'll just keep alternating. Other than that, I just want you to hold it nice and tight, make a tabletop. If your tush is up in the air like that, you've got to just smack that down like that and hold. Now we're gonna do some hinges. So we're gonna press up and away, give your shoulders a little stretch, and then pull down into plank and squeeze. Press up and pull down. Press up and pull down. Got that? Press up and pull down. Let's just do one more of these. Press up and pull down. Now rest. Bring your knees under and stretch. All right, then let's go back into plank. Elbows back under the shoulders, walk the feet out. And this time we're gonna make like a washing machine and we're gonna do a little bit of swiveling. Bring the hips over to one side just a little bit and then the other. Look at my toes, I'm rocking side to side on my toes. It gets pretty intense, so again, modification anytime. Swivel over and tap your knee down. There's your mod. If not, just swivel side to side slowly and small. Don't wanna throw anything out of whack there. And just rocking those hips, elbows are braced. Excellent. I know it gets hard. One more and take a little breather. Bring the knees under, stretch back while we prepare for our next one. Next one is gonna be tap outs to the side. So the whole leg is gonna move. Here we go, back into your plank. Wardrobe adjustment. You're wearing a long t-shirt too, right? Elbows under the shoulders and tap to the side and together. Oh, that's so much harder. The lower you keep your leg, the better it is. So try not to kick it up like that. We don't want a big arc. Just a small tap to the side. If you're using a mat, use your mat to find your distance. Just go right off the edge of your mat and squeeze. Most importantly, don't let those shoulders sag. Press down on those elbows. Give me one more and take a little breather. Back into child pose. Now, I know your arms are getting a little tired, so you really have to rely on those core muscles now more than ever. All right, last one is gonna be a side plank. Elbow goes under the shoulder. 
we're gonna bring the top leg forward and the bottom leg back. Where we wanna be is way up here, hello. But you may not get there the first time you try this, so you might have to put your bottom knee down. So here we go. Just hold the side plank as long as you can. Elbow under the shoulder is the most important part. And then whatever you need to do with this other hand, adjust wardrobe, grab a drink, wave to your mom. Hi, mom. And then the bottom part of your waist is what's working. So make sure you feel that gripping your ribs to hips. Put the knee down anytime you need. Love you to do 30 seconds of this. Keep holding. Five more. Four, three, two, and down. All right, let's do it on the other side. I know the arm gets tired, but as we're getting stronger from our program, I promise you, your arms are gonna get stronger and stronger and it's gonna get easier. Same thing on the other side. Top leg forward, bottom leg back, elbow under the shoulder, and we're gonna use this top hand to help prop the hip up. Modification is knee on the floor. And just hold for 30 seconds. And this is gonna be it. Light at the end of the tunnel, pot of gold at the end of your rainbow, or just happy with being done. Shoulder has to stay away from that earlobe, so keep your neck out long. It's always an extension of your spine. And smile pretty. Hold, hold please, and hold, and five, four, three, two, once again, you made it. Let's lie on our backs, do a spine stretch, roll down nice and slow, grab your legs if you need, inhale back, bring your knees to one side and the arms sweep across the other way. Just rest there for a moment, work any kinks out of your spine. Inhale, take it the other way. Feel free to spend as much time as you need here to stretch out those abdominals. Bend the knees straight up to the ceiling, reach back again. Grab one leg, see if you can pull yourself up. If not, roll to the side. And take a nice deep breath, inhale. Lift the spine up, keep your tailbone down, and exhale. And you've done it again, gang. Another fabulous workout. That was number seven, our core and ab challenge. I'm Jill Brown.